In this video, we will talk about kinetic energy and work. In particular, we will define what kinetic energy is and how to calculate kinetic energy. We shall also define and calculate work and we shall only concentrate work done by constant force in this video. And finally, we shall bring these two concepts together through a theorem that is known as work kinetic energy theorem. Kinetic energy. It is a scalar as with any other type of energy and it is measured in the SI unit of joules. The abbreviation is capital J. Now, kinetic energy is the type of energy that is associated with motion. What that means is if an object is moving, then the object has kinetic energy. If the object is at rest or stationary, its kinetic energy is zero. Simple as that. So the equation defining kinetic energy can be written in a following manner. K is the symbol that we usually use to denote kinetic energy. Half times mass times the square of speed. So you see m is mass measured in the unit of kg, kilograms, and v is speed of the object measured in the units of meter per second. Now you see that when the object is moving, v is non-zero, so k is non-zero. And when the object is not moving, v is zero and k is zero. So that is what we mean when we say kinetic energy is a type of energy that is associated with motion of an object. Let's look at these two cases and calculate the kinetic energy for these two cases. In case one, the object is moving purely to the right with some speed v. It has mass m. So the kinetic energy is, let's say mass is 2 kg and its velocity, its speed is, let's say, 3 meter per second. So the kinetic energy of this mass as it moves to the right with a speed of 3 meter per second is half times 2 times the square of its speed, so 9 joule. Now in the second case, if you have the same object with mass 2 kg and it moves with the same speed of 3 meter per second, although it's moving at slightly different direction compared to case 1, you see that if we compute the kinetic energy for the second case, it will be half times mass times, again, the square of speed. And you get the same number, 9 joules, as the first case. So the point is, kinetic energy of an object is independent of the direction with which the, mo the object moves. It just depends on two things, namely the mass and its speed. If the mass and speed, the two cases are the same, then the kinetic energy will turn out to be the same. Next, let's look at the concept of work. Work is a scalar quantity and it is measured in the same units as the units of energy, that is joules. More accurately, work can be considered as transferred energy. And it is associated with force. So work W is energy transferred to or from an object by means of a force acting on the object. Equation that defines work can be written in terms of dot product of two vectors. The first vector is force, the second vector is the displacement vector. So this is the force vector measured in the units of newtons as we know and this is the displacement vector measured in the units of meters. We also know from the definition of dot product of two vectors that can be written as f the magnitude of f times the magnitude of d times cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement vector. So what that means, work can be positive or negative, depending on the relative direction 
of force and the displacement. Now we shall explain this further next. Now the case where work can be positive is like this. If you have an object that is being pulled to the right by a force F and in doing so it is getting displaced by a distance X. So you see the displacement and the force has an angle between them which is zero degrees. So cosine zero degrees is one. So the work which is in this case becomes the force times the displacement is simply a positive quantity. Let's look at the negative case, the case where the work is negative. At this initial point, let's say friction struck to act on this object as the object moves to the right. So the friction always act leftward, opposite to motion, let's say kinetic friction. And as it gets to the final point, it stops and comes to a complete rest. So what is the work done by kinetic friction in this case? So we say the kinetic friction does a negative work. So that is the kinetic friction times the displacement times the angle between kinetic friction and the displacement. So in this case, the displacement is to the right, that is that, and the force, friction, is going to the left. So the angle between them is 180 degrees. So cosine 180 degrees is minus 1. So you see in this case the work done by the kinetic friction on the object as it slows down as it moves to the right is negative. Let's look at the following exercise real quick. You have an object that's been inserted or that's been acted upon by a force of two newtons acting in an I hat direction and in doing so the object is getting displaced to the right by four meters. So what is the work done on this object by the force? So the answer is the first vector is the force vector 2i hat dotted into the displacement vector. Displacement vector is 4 and the displacement is to the right so i hat and we know i hat dot i hat is 1 so the answer is quite simply positive 8 joules. Next let's do the following problem. An object is sliding across the floor and displacement is minus 4 i hat while it's being pushed by a force of that nature. Compute the work done by the force. So this is essentially just dot product, the dot product between the force and the displacement. The only difference now is the force is two-dimensional. So it is 2i hat minus 5j hat dotted into minus 4i hat, which is the displacement. Now we know i hat dotted into i hat is 1, so that's going to give you minus 8, 2 times minus 4 that is, and j hat times a dotted into i hat is 0, and that's it. The answer is minus 8 joules. So basically what happens to this object is that because the work is negative, the energy is being transferred out of the object, causing the object to slow down. Let's look at this problem. Calculate the net work done on this object by the forces shown as it moves leftward by 4 meters. So let's say the leftward is measured like that, so it's moving in a leftward direction. Now how many forces are there that is responsible for this work? There is F2 and there is F1. F3 does not affect the work because it is perpendicular to the direction of motion. So cosine 90 is 0. So that means F3 does not play any role in the net force for the displacement shown. So let's calculate the net force because net work is done by net force. So the net force in this case will be F1, which is 9 newtons, plus, which is going in a minus i hat direction, let's call this a vector equation, plus F2, or the x component of F2. Now what is F com x component of force F2? It is quite simply 8 cosine 40. So substituting this in here, you get minus 9 plus 8 cosine 40 degrees i hat, which is 
which is minus 2.87 i hat in the units of newtons. So that means the work, the net work done, is the dot product of the net force, which is minus 2.87 i hat dotted into displacement, which is minus 4 i hat, minus 4 because it's moving to the left, and that's going to give you positive 11.5 joules. So that is the work done. Next, let's bring the two concepts that we learned together in a single theorem known as work kinetic energy theorem. The theorem is simple. It simply says work done by a certain force in an object equals the change in kinetic energy of the object. So work equals the change in kinetic energy. Change in kinetic energy is defined as the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. And that is work kinetic energy theorem. Let's try to understand this theorem. Now let's say you have an object here and it's being pushed by some force F and in doing so it's going to get displaced to the right by a distance X. Now because there is this action by this force this object will accelerate to the right and that is simply due to Newton's second law. Now when the object accelerates that means its speed changes between the two locations the initial and final location. If the initial location the speed is 2 meter per second when it gets to the final location due to acceleration its speed will be greater than 2 let's say 4. So you see that because kinetic energy here is dependent on the square of the speed, let's say the mass is m and then 2 squared, the kinetic energy at the final point it will now be bigger because now the speed is greater. So what happened here is the work done by this force F on this object in displacing the object at this by distance x has increased its kinetic energy from Ki to Kf. That is the essence of work kinetic energy theorem. Let's look at a problem on work kinetic energy theorem. So at t equals to 0 seconds, you have a force given like that acts on a 3 kg object with an initial speed of 6 meter per second. Calculate its final speed when its displacement from the initial position is that. Let's first calculate the work done by this force on this object. It is essentially the dot product of force and the displacement. So the force is minus 5i hat plus 5j hat plus 2k hat. It's a three-dimensional force, but doesn't matter. The calculation is the same. Displacement is 2i hat plus j hat plus 5k hat. So this is a direct dot product. So i with i that's going to give you minus 10. j with j that is 5 and k with k that is 10. So your work will turn out to be 5 joules, positive 5 joules. Now let's calculate the kinetic energy, the initial kinetic energy and the final kinetic energy. The initial kinetic energy is half times mass is 3. It's given right there. Initial speed is 6, so 6 squared, so that's going to be 54 joules. Now, kinetic energy of the final location, we don't know, but that's all right. We can figure that out. So according to work kinetic energy theorem, is the work done equals the change in kinetic energy. The change in kinetic energy is the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. So that means your final kinetic energy is 50 9 joules. So since we're interested in the object speed at the final point, so if you equate the kf to half times mass times the final speed squared, so that is 59, mass is 3 times vf squared, and you can calculate the vf squared, and you get vf as 6.3 meter per second. So that is the final speed, namely the object speed when its displacement from the initial position is that. And that solves the problem. An additional comment. Now because the work computed was positive 5, it's natural for the final speed to be greater than the initial speed. So if you calculate the final speed in this case to be less than 6, then you have done a mistake 
and you have to go and check back your calculations. Thanks for watching.